Welcome to Neyland Stadium, our post-game wrap-up here at SportsRadioWNML.com. Vince Ferrara, Josh Ward after LSU comes into Neyland Stadium with some crazy weather in the second half. 30-10 to 10 victory over Tennessee, and uh, Tennessee now 4-7 and seven overall in the year, 0-7 oh in conference play. Uh, the day was crazy as this week has been, Josh, with all the groomers and John Gruden sightings allegedly and all that, but um, your thoughts overall on this game and another tough loss for Tennessee. Well, you're right. Uh, this week, this game received such little conversation or attention because of all the questions about what was going on with the coaching search and, of course, the groomers, so very fitting that shortly before kickoff there becomes a rumor and really a just it's a statement from Calhoun's that John Gruden was there and then turns out he wasn't so that got a lot of attention right before and during the early part of the game then you get to the game and then you have wild weather I'm not sure they should have been playing when they were at the beginning of the second half uh, I might throw out a thank you to Brady Hoke that he said, yeah, let's just go ahead and play because I think a lot of people were probably ready to move on with the evening. And it, it just didn't go well for Tennessee, really, in, in, in too many aspects. Tennessee was able to move the football and did some things offensively. The scoreboard doesn't necessarily show some of the things that Tennessee was able to do because it didn't capitalize on opportunities, which has been a big part of the story this season as well. So since he was able to move the football, actually put up a good amount of yardage and, and beat out LSU there. It's just that uh, you, you didn't score enough points and you've had too many mistakes like you have all year long. Yeah, uh, those buffed punts from Marquez Callaway, big factor in the game too. It gave LSU field position and uh, they're able to punch it in, I guess, the second time. Yeah, you just, in this kind of game, when Tennessee's a 15, 16, 17 point underdog by kickoff, you can't turn the football over deep in your your own territory and just set up LSU for easy points and LSU got 10 easy points early in the game and that's just too much for Tennessee to overcome it was really reverse what Tennessee needed to do Tennessee needed to force mistakes by LSU most likely in LSU territory and then capitalize on that so when you give a team that's far superior and Tennessee had personnel issues and then the offensive line gets beaten up even more Jay Sean Robertson goes down uh, it was just too much for Tennessee to overcome. Yeah, Tennessee started out the game without a backup scholarship quarterback or offensive lineman. Then you had Jay Sean Robertson go down, and then you had Joe Keeler, a walk-on play. You had a, a player, a walk-on play that no one's ever heard of <laughs> that apparently has been here for a good part of the year. Uh, so everyone was scrambling in the press box looking to see who number 34 was. It, it was just a, another level of bizarre they added to the game. It just shows where this team has accumulated a lot of unfortunate things and injuries on top of the the rough play earlier in the year. Yeah, the, the rainstorm really was a metaphor for what this season has been, and Tennessee playing through it I thought was very representative as well. And you know, The offensive line was probably the deepest position group on Tennessee's football team at the start of the year, and it's the thinnest position now, either that or quarterback, uh, because you're, you're down against LSU, at least, to one scholarship quarterback. So uh, Tennessee's had a lot of issues and a number of different kinds of issues over the course of the season. And now with all the injuries, Tennessee's going into the final week against Vanderbilt. Uh, very questionable with where its roster is, but Vanderbilt, an 0-7 football team just like Tennessee, uh, it's it's not going to be the highest profile matchup next week. No, not at all. And likely, certainly, you know, both teams 0-7 in conference play. Tennessee has never been winless in SEC play before. Is there anything you can possibly expect next week other than maybe not the greatest of football? Yeah, bad football. I expect bad football. And uh, Tennessee, I, I do think, will be motivated to avoid an 0-8 SEC season and Tennessee and Ohio State are your two programs that have never had an eight loss season. Ohio State's obviously not doing it this year. Tennessee could. So Tennessee's goal will be to not have the worst season in Tennessee football history. All right. Let's get out of here, shall we? It's uh, it's windy and cold out here. Yeah, the wind continues to blow. They're telling us, move along with your evening. All right. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. All right, Josh Ward, Vince Ferrara here after Tennessee Falls to LSU 30-10. to 10. Go to sportsradiownml.com for much more coverage and then listen throughout the week. We'll have the latest on the Tennessee coaching search and everything else going on with Tennessee football for entire crew. For Brian Rice, Josh Ward, I'm Vince Ferrara. Thanks for watching.